Look for Mac. This is a demonstration of Flip for Mac. This is a demonstration of flip for Mac. So I'm going to shift to English right now. A quick overview of the Kuwaiti healthcare system. As many of you know, the Kuwaiti healthcare system is predominantly dominated by the government. 80% of healthcare spend and 80% of the healthcare infrastructure is provided by different government entities, the majority of which is provided by the Ministry of Health. The private sector, uh, when it comes to actually healthcare infrastructure, is also about roughly 20%. However, we do see that the government sector is increasing. This is a demonstration of Flip for Mac. Uh, the private sector right now uh, is not adding as many specialties and as many uh, clinical infrastructure as the government is. Another important consideration on this slide is the private health insurance market. Today in Kuwait, the private insurance market is roughly only between 30 to 50 million KD, uh, and roughly the amount of enrollees in private health insurance schemes is about 150,000 people only. And this is in a country of 3.6 million. The this spend per population is a bit high in Kuwait when you look at compared to other uh, Arab countries, but certainly when it comes to other more developed countries, the spend is pretty low. Uh, for example, in the United States, the government spends roughly 1,500 KD per citizen, Whereas here in Kuwait, the spend is roughly about 750 KD in total. Uh, another important consideration, which we will mention later on, is the amount spent on sending patients abroad. We have roughly about 500 million KD spent a year sending patients to the US, Western Europe, and to other uh, other. Uh, this markets. is a demonstration of flip from us. This is a slide regarding the Ministry of Health budget over the past five years, five, five fiscal years. We see that the budget itself is increasing almost exponentially. Uh, the K grows roughly about 15%. We noticed that back in 2008 and 2009, the entire Minister of Health budget, not including the overseas healthcare spend, was roughly 620 million KD. The fiscal budget for this year was roughly three times that, or 1.5 billion KD. And again, only about 150 million This KD is a demonstration of healthcare. flip for Mac. Now, obviously, much more than that will most likely be spent this entire year. We also noticed that the value of contracts signed uh, for medical devices, as an example, by the Minister of Health has also increased uh, at roughly a KGR of 7%. Uh, this again reflects the increase in spending on the healthcare infrastructure, uh, and of course, um, these contracts are reflective of the new technology that is being brought in to the government and specifically the Minister. This is a demonstration of Flip for Mac. We also noticed that the, not only the Ministry of Health, but there are six government entities involved in building healthcare facilities, whether it's clinics or hospitals. So the Ministry of Health is by far the largest, but you also have an insurance company, which is currently being founded by the government, called the Kuwait Health Insurance Company, which we'll talk about later. We have the Ministry of Public Works, which was also, until, up until recently, planning to build hospitals. The Kuwait Oil Company has also been flagged as a... This is a demonstration of Flip for Mac. The Public Institute for Social Security has also committed to build roughly about three new hospitals. And finally, the Ministry of Interior is also building a new hospital for the uh, Kuwaiti police. Now, what does that mean? It means that the bed capacity today will jump from around 7,000 beds to roughly 22 or 23,000 beds by the next 10 years. So we will effectively almost triple the bed capacity in the number of, bed, uh, number of hospitals we have in Kuwait. In, this is a demonstration of Flip for Mac. And I mentioned, uh, if we just compare that to the number of hotel rooms, uh, so today in Kuwait you have roughly about between seven to 8,000 beds, and the number of hotel rooms you have is about the same. You have about 7,000 hotel rooms. Now, if we increase the hotel rooms at their current growth rate of 5%, and we increase the hotels, uh, sorry, the uh, hospital beds by their growth rate of 14% or 15%, which we saw earlier, 
Well, notice that we will have in the this next, is a uh, demonstration five, seven years, of flip from that. The amount of hospital beds as hotel rooms in Kuwait. Now, do we need all these extra hospital beds? Uh, if you do some quick analysis, and this is analysis that was done late last year, on the current hospital infrastructure in Kuwait, we have on the right side of the screen the general hospitals, and on the left side of the screen we have the specialized hospitals in Kuwait. This chart now will show you all the government hospitals of the Ministry of Health. This is a demonstration. And we notice that when it comes to measuring them on occupancy rate and average length of stay, all of the government hospitals, with the exception of the maternity hospitals, are operating not in line with international benchmarks. Now, hospitals are a little bit different to hotels. In a hotel, you always want the occupancy rate to be close to 100%. In a hospital, you want the occupancy rate to be between 85 to 90% to avoid two things. Number one, to have extra capacity for emergency cases, and number two, to avoid nosocomial or hospital-based disease. This is a demonstration We know that most all of the hospitals in Kuwait have occupancy rate below 70%. Uh, and many of them actually even below 65%. And the average length of stay, which is how long somebody stays in a hospital, is actually below international benchmarks as well. Again, in a hotel, you want your guests to stay as long as possible. However, in a hospital, and even more importantly, a government hospital, you want the patient to, to stay there as little as possible. And we noticed that most of the hospitals in Kuwait have an average length of stay. This is a demonstration of flip for men. 15 days, which is the example of the cancer hospital. And uh, in the case of general hospital, many of the hospitals have a average of stay beyond four days, actually. Now, we talked a lot about the quantity, about adding a lot of hospitals and adding more infrastructure. What about quality? Uh, quality is something very tricky to talk about in healthcare. Uh, there's a lot of research talk about pay for performance, about measuring quality, what is a good doctor, what is a good hospital. But, but as one indicator, let's look at this is a demonstration the American of Accreditation from the JCIA. We know that, for example, in Kuwait, we only currently have two facilities, two private hospitals, Taiwa Hospital and New Masa Hospital, that are joint uh, commission accredited, uh, joint commission international accredited. Whereas in Saudi Arabia, they have 36 hospitals, including many government hospitals, such as King Faisal Specialist Hospital, that have been accredited since the 1970s uh, by the JCI. Now, what does this translate in terms of the patient? This is so a we demonstration noticed that this was research done format. by, uh, I believe, the uh, Gallup uh, group, that Kuwaiti patients are the most dissatisfied when it comes to medical care in the country compared to all the other GCC countries. And this translates, obviously, to the large number of Kuwaiti patients being sent abroad by the Ministry of Health. Uh, so as an example, we know that Kuwaitis, again, 65% of them, are not, uh, are prefer, sorry, prefer to, to have medical care in another country and in fact, actually, over on five thousand. This is a, a year demonstration of the Ministry of Health for overseas healthcare. And of course, this number is just an approximation. The the exact number would be much higher. And we know that roughly the entire GCC spends between seven billion to twelve billion dollars a year sending patients abroad, and a large portion of that is actually sent by Kuwait. Finally, the the process for sending medical patients abroad is actually very convoluted. Uh, Within the Ministry of Health itself, there are five this is a demonstration five departments of flip for that will actually uh, need to get, uh, the, the patient needs to get the approval of before they are able to get sent abroad. And keeping that in mind, we also know that there are other entities that send patients abroad. The Ministry of Defense will send patients abroad. The Kuwait Oil Company will also send patients abroad, as well as the Emiri Diwan, the Diwan of the Crown Prince, and the Diwan of the Prime Minister. So there are many entities that send patients abroad, just as there are many entities that build hospitals uh, and clinics here in Kuwait. This is a demonstration wow. of flip for Mac. So in terms of vision, what is needed? Uh, today in Kuwait, you have a, a very disorganized and a very centralized healthcare system, whereby the Ministry of Health is both the regulator, the provider, and the payer of healthcare. Uh, the private sector is also a provider and a payer for private health insurance. And you have other government entities, such as the uh, KOC, or the Kuwait University, and the military facilities that also are their own regulators. This is a demonstration of flip for men. What we need to move uh, closer to Kuwait is a uh, more decentralized and more organized system where there is a single regulator, such as the Kuwaiti Health Authority, something very similar to what exists in Abu Dhabi, that can act as the referee or as the overall guidance for the entire healthcare system to avoid excess planning in terms of hospitals, excess planning in terms of insurance spend. And the Ministry of Health and the other providers will be, become pure providers of healthcare, 
and a private health insurance. This is a demonstration a of flip from that. Sustainable uh, way of financing the healthcare system. Another suggestion would be to also create a centralized office for overseas healthcare, and again, as is the case in Abu Dhabi, uh, where all patients, regardless of which ministry they are employed by, can go and apply for overseas healthcare depending on their needs. Finally, I'd like to talk about one uh, very important project, uh, which is the Quake Health Assurance uh, Company. And this is a project which was this is a demonstration uh, initially incubated of by the for back. back in, uh, I would think, of December 2009, and was recently awarded to a private sector court consortium towards the end of 2013. Uh, the important part of this is that uh, the government now is trying to find a creative way to finance the healthcare system whereby not all of the burden will be shifted on the Ministry of Finance and by proxy the Ministry of Health, but uh, we'll try and find ways to encourage the private sector to get involved in both providing health care as well as health care insurance. This what is a demonstration is of Flip for Man. Uh, organization. This is the new terminology that replaces the Health Maintenance Organization, or HMO, from the United States, uh, whereby the government will no longer provide the basic, basic assurance product uh, for all experts in Kuwait, and instead this will be provided to the government sector. Uh, sorry, to, to this uh, private uh, company. A uh, very important point is that this company is not only for the expats, it will also be open to Kuwaitis and Kuwaitis to join. However, uh, my current understanding is that this, this is a demonstration has not of yet been established. The company has not been established yet by the government. And instead, uh, we are waiting for uh, the council ministers to establish this project as one element of uh, creating a new financing scheme for the government. So this was a very broad overview about the Kuwaiti healthcare system. Uh, if people have any questions, please uh, save them towards the end. I'd now like to introduce uh, Dr. Anis Balas uh, from the uh, World Bank, who will now give us a quick presentation on the benefits of strategic planning in healthcare. This is a demonstration.